Thanks for staying on News Desk and uh, to our earlier story where the Electoral Commission has officially communicated to the new patriotic party, that's the opposition, the largest opposition party uh, in the country, uh, on reasons why they cannot, that is the EC, cannot replace the existing electoral register as we gear up for election 2016. Joining me on the phone now with some thoughts on this particular issue is Director of Elections for the party, Martin E.J. Mensah Kosa. Uh, Mr. Kosa, good morning, many thanks for your time. Now, yeah, I, I presume the MPP must be pretty disappointed with the <laughs> response from the Electoral Commission. How much so? Well, good, good morning to your, your viewers. Uh, it's indeed true that we have received uh, the document you just talked about from the Electoral Commission. Um, that was um, just on the eve of the New Year. And the NTP is reviewing it and will soon uh, make a public position uh, once we are done with that. The, the response received from uh, the EC, does it in any way suggest that, well, the battle has been lost, the NPP, there's, there isn't much you can do, there's nothing more you can do about it? We'll soon put our position across, and then we'll know it from there. Earlier, mm. uh, your party, and uh, quite a few others, including shall go bled my vote count. You've been championing the cause for the replacement of this existing rule, claiming that it's bloated and that uh, if we go ahead and use it for the elections, well, we can be sure that we might not have credible polls. Do you still stand by that and uh, how much of a problem would this be? Yes, our position hasn't changed. With the, 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 the reports that have come, it does not even deal with the issues. But I, I said, uh, let's wait to see what the NPP decides finally. Um, what, what has come to us is just a lazy piece of work, okay? Shoddy and bogus. It, it, it really doesn't do anything, but we always wait to see what the MPP official position is. Okay, so the MPP is yet to officially communicate to the Electoral Commission. But uh, earlier you did mention that uh, you, you see their work as shoddy and that uh, they didn't really uh, address most of your issues. But uh, based on what I have read, they seem to have addressed quite a number of the issues here. If for nothing at all, I have about three points here. You raising issues about uh, the removal of names of uh, some Togolese nationals. Well, they seem to say that uh, your particular, uh, should I say, research you did is not credible enough. There's nothing to suggest that indeed these people are Togolese. Well, you may be privy to what you have read or what you have seen. Uh, you are telling me that they appear to have done uh, some work in answering us. But that's in your view. I disagree. Um, I've told you how or what the work they've done looks like. But I will not be drawn into discussing it until uh, the party has officially um, uh, reviewed and then made a position. And uh, when does the party hope to do this? As soon as we are ready, we'll let you know. Okay, right. Many thanks for your time on News Desk this morning. And uh, that was the New Patriotic Party's Director of Elections. Martin AJ Mensa, of course, will join us over the telephone with some thoughts on the issue. But away from that, and we can do some more stories here. Let's turn our attention to power and energy. And there could be an intensification of load shedding in the coming weeks. Now, that's because the a turbo gas processing plant is built to shut down for 14 days for mandatory maintenance, according to a statement signed by the corporate communications manager of the gas, Alfred Obami. The plant maintenance will begin on Friday. January 15. as much as possible and bring you much more on that particular story including an interview with all the appropriate uh, authorities on this issue pretty shortly. Now by close of day today, commuters will know exactly how much more they will need to spend on transport as officials of the Ghana Private Road Transport Union and the Transport Ministry meet over the issue. Now this follows the coming into force of the energy levy bill recently passed by Parliament which has seen petroleum prices go up by as much as 27 percent. While we wait for the outcome of that particular meeting, my colleague Latif Idris has been out getting the views of some fuel pump operators and commercial drivers on the new increment. It is New Year and the felicitation is Happy New Year. But I'm sure you're not happy with the latest increments in petroleum products. Uh, increment takes effect today, Monday. It has been increased between 17 to 28 uh, percent. 
most of the fuel stations have already increased, I mean, their products to, I mean, level with the increments that has been effected. I'm here at one station, that is Sky Bus Station at Circle, to gauge the mood of the operators, drivers, and passengers as far as this increment is concerned. So come with me. Let's speak to um, one of the managers of the first station here at Circle to find out how, I mean, he came about with a new price that has been charged here and how um, drivers and, I mean, passengers are also taking the heat. You're welcome to join you, sir. Thank you, sir. Have you increased your... I mean, prices as far as the products you have here are concerned? Of course. We increased it this morning. Um, how did you come about, I mean, the new prices? Well, we, we are sellers. We cannot do anything about it. So the increment, does it benefit you as a seller? Mm, of course. How is that? Uh, well, we get uh, products under the tank. So before we, sell, we buy it, maybe one Ghana CD, now they increase it, maybe we sell it uh, two Ghana CD. That means we benefit to one CD. So you are selling your old products yeah. at a new price? Of course. You are cheating the customers? No, we are not cheating. Because if they increase, we have some inside, uh, if they reduce it, now we go buy the, the product at the store. Now, if we buy today, today, no. If they, they reduce the price today, sir, we have to reduce what about that? It whether we lost it or we again. So it be balancing. So if they come, that it's okay for us. Okay, thank you very much, Mohammed. So that is uh, he works at the Sky Filling Station here at Circle. Let's uh, now get some more. I uh, mean, people to speak to on this subject. Uh, uh, hello, you are welcome to join us. Oh, okay. Uh, I see you are packed here. You want to get some fuel for your bike yeah. how are you taking the increment oh see, the company has increased it so we have nothing to do about it all we have to do is to adapt to what the government has done and then take uh, the necessary action and then you are okay with it because if you go to the world markets prices of crude has come down to i mean one of its lowest Yes, so we are increasing prices here. Are you okay with the increment? Actually, the government is looking at the economy, how best the economy can move. You know, they are there. we've given them the um, authority to um, take charges of all the um, decisions um, in this country. It's, it's ridiculous. We live in a country where everything seems just to be going up. It's just not fair. Did you budget for this going into this year, yeah, I mean 2016? No, not at all, not at all, not at all. Honestly, uh, this new year we are going to ease into it with uh, the old system and then try to adjust to it only to be hit with this shock with the increments in Is food. And that was a report there by my colleague Latif Idris. He's been speaking to quite a number of people. If you also do have a similar sentiments or comments, you could as always uh, get in touch with us on uh, John News. Our various social media networks are available for that. But away from that, and the director of Urban Roads, Alaji Abbas Awolu, says over 70% of motorists who damage road infrastructure get away with it. Now, with the rising cost of maintaining roads, Alaji Awolo is appealing to Ghanaians to own up when they destroy accessories like traffic lights and rail guards. We have to get out the support of the uh, Motor Traffic and Transport Division of the Ghana Police Service, being able to apprehend some people because I've had the opportunity to uh, send out letters to uh, people whose names have been given to us as those who have been culprits or who have actually damaged uh, road infrastructure. And I think that the police have seized their vehicles and they, until they pay for the repairs. And normally now they pay the repairs to the firm that is responsible for the maintenance. So if you have a firm that is responsible for replacing crash barriers, until the firm goes back to put the crash barrier in place, the police will not even release. So that means that when you pay, 
a certain timeline is given for the replacement to be done. But unfortunately, more than 70% or even 80% of the people who hit run away. The head of Urban Roads added that with the advent of speed cameras, road safety on new highways will be improved. Linking up some of the uh, um, intersections along the Insawan Road, we we'll also put in cameras there, and they will be specifically for traffic operations. So obviously, that particular link, we, will have, we shall be creating a control center, and the police will have access to that control center. In some countries, once you have the control center, it's a national security operation for all that. And then there's a feed that goes into uh, for the police, for the MTTD in this case, so they can use that to apprehend. Uh, they are even suggesting that when you go past, when you jump red, which is a crime as far as our road traffic regulation is concerned, the cameras can easily capture you and that can. But there are a lot of cameras now and they're, 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 they're operational. And that was the director of uh, Urban Roads, Abbas Awolu. There, you're still watching News Desk here on Joy News Multi TV. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll bring your business.